so here's the power module for the Pixhawk that I've got and here's the GST connector I'll connect one end of the wire over here and on the flight controller where it says power is where the other end of the power cable will be connected now we have two XT60 connectors on the power module on this side where we have the male connectors is where the battery will be connected so the battery will go on this side and this end of the connector which has the female leads uh, if you want you can cut the wire from here and solder this on the PCB of the flight controller or you can solder a XT60 connector with male end on the drone and connect this to that connector like how I have on my S500 frame so the power module for this APM is intact I've soldered a XT60 connector on the frame and to that port I connect the power module which powers up the drone and the power module that I have is manufactured in 2023 and it's a fresh unit we can say and we have some ratings so we can connect anywhere from 2 to 12 s lipo battery and the BEC has an output of 5.45 volts with a 2.5 amp max current rating Alright, so once the power module is connected to the Pixhawk, I'll connect a LiPo battery. I have a 3S battery with me for now. So I'll connect this and see if the board is powered up. And indeed it is. Alright, so now I'll connect the USB cable. And I'll connect the board so then to set up the power module for voltage and current readings I'll go to setup in the optional hardware I'll select battery monitor now here we have two menus for battery monitor we can set up uh, two power modules or two readings for the battery reading and the current reading so here in the battery monitor you can edit the capacity of your battery for now i have this 1500 mh battery which is for the testing purpose but i'll be using somewhere between 3000 to 5000 milliamp power lipo battery i won't edit this at this point of time however i'll edit the monitor option which is disabled here it says this feature is not enabled in your firmware Okay, so this is interesting. So I'll select analog voltage and current, and we have an error. In the sensors option, we have a lot of options actually. Now, the correct one should be the 3DR power module because that's what I'm using. But if I select this, I won't get the correct reading and even for the APM actually we have to select other and in the hardware version I can select the cube or Pixhawk now even after I've selected the correct options the battery voltage that is calculated is showing zero now, now this is because I'm using the latest version of machine planner which is 1.3.80 if I toggle between the menu we still don't have any battery readings so what I'm going to do is I'll disconnect quit this version of machine planner and use an old version like the 1.3.68 and I launch that 
I'll connect all right and so I'll go to initial setup optional hardware battery monitor now here we have the same error but I guess this should work so in the monitor option I'll select analog voltage and current in the sensors let's see what happens 3d power module and sock right, so there is some problem over here if I measure the battery reading It's at 11.1 volts. Let me disconnect and power cycle the board. I'll plug in the USB cable first. Then connect the battery. And connect in machine planner. and if you look closely we do have some readings for the battery voltage calculated which is showing about 5.22 volts so at least we do have some reading that has been detected off of this power module that i've connected so once more i'll select analog voltage and current now here i'll select other in the sensors option and here in the hardware version I'll select Pixhawk. So now in version 1.3.76, once I've connected the board, straight away I can see the battery voltage, which is at 11.09 volts. So the power module is now set up for the Pixhawk. And just to make sure, in the battery monitor option, we still have analog voltage and current sensor is set to other and the hardware version is the cube or pixhawk so i guess we can move on to the next step now here i have a telemetry kit with me and this is a 900 megahertz module with a power rating of 500 milliwatts this should have a good range on the setup for this telemetry i'll cover in a different video and I'll make sure to cover this for the Pixhawk and the APM as well. Although the steps are the same, but a few settings might be different. So I'll cover how to update the firmware on the module and how to change some of the settings. And I also have this mini OST module, which I've purchased to use with this Pixhawk flight controller. This can be used with the APM as well. Here's the mini OST module. On this end we will connect the VTX and the camera and this is where the wire for the Pixhawk will be connected and this plug will go on the telemetry port where we have to assign the OSD option so this will be covered in a separate video as well so our Pixhawk flight controller is now uh, more or less calibrated and set up so I can now assemble my frame and install all the components on the frame so here is the hexacopter frame that i have the s550 and here are the components so this i'll cover in the assembly video so that's all i have to share in this series of how to set up the pixoc 2.4.8 flight controller from radio link if you guys have any suggestions or questions, you can comment them. I'll be more than happy to guide you guys. I do have a 3-axis gimbal as well, which I'll be installing. So the hexacopter that I'm building is going to be fully loaded. And I want to use it as a backup drone or whenever I have to shoot some aerial footage. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next videos.